What's up, everyone? Welcome to Lowered Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. In today's video, we are going to be replacing the glow plug on my Viver 2 kilowatt diesel heater. This is exactly the same process and exactly the same part that you will use on a 5 kilowatt or 8 kilowatt. So if you are replacing one on your 5 or 8, this video will be helpful for you. The glow plug kit that I'm using in this video comes with, of course, a glow plug, a glow plug removal and installation tool that is very handy, the glow plug mesh that you will only need if your mesh is very carboned up and dirty, and a couple of gaskets that you will also not need if you follow the instructions in this video. We're going to make it easy. Changing your glow plug is really easy and you shouldn't be intimidated about this. The things that you are going to need, of course, you're going to need a glow plug and you might also want to make sure you have a mesh. Most glow plugs will come with a mesh and most of them also come with a special tool for removing the glow plug. You can do it without this, but the process is a little bit more lengthy and so we are actually going to be using the special tool. I have a screwdriver for turning that special tool. A pair of needle nose pliers just in case we need to replace the mesh if it has any carbon buildup on it. And a 12 wrench if you don't have this special tool then you need to remove the fan and actually use that wrench. And then some ECUs need to be removed with a 5 mil Allen key and some use, or sorry, a 4 millimeter Allen key and some use a 3. Pretty much all of these heaters come apart in the same way, the 5 kilowatt, 2 kilowatt, and 8 kilowatt versions. You simply screw the nut off the inlet side of the heater, and then this cover will pull off just like that. Super, super easy. Next thing you want to do is flip it up on end. Make sure you don't drop it and tip it over because you could smash the ECU or some other parts. So make sure you have it secured. The screw on this ECU is a three millimeter. You want to make sure when you tighten this back up not to tighten it too tight because that is just plastic and so you don't want to break it. You remove this one screw and once you have it removed, set it aside somewhere where you're not going to lose it because you will need that again. Up here you have kind of like a luggage clasp. I don't know what you call it, but it's like a buckle. Normally you have a male side and a female side and they snap together. On this, basically you have the male side that attaches to the heater and the female side would be the ECU itself. So you just squeeze those tabs together. This is a little bit tricky, but just squeeze those tabs together with your fingers while pulling out on the ECU and it will pop out just like that. Now what you want to do is disconnect the glow plug connector just by pushing down on this little tab and wiggling it. It will probably be a little bit stubborn, especially if you're not used to working with these connectors. Make sure not to use too much force. Do a lot of wiggling and not a whole lot of pulling or you could end up pulling the wires out of the connector itself and you don't want to do that because then it's just a whole lot of fuss to get it sorted out. Same with this one. This is for the heat sensor. We're going to remove the ECU altogether just to get it out of our way. We don't really need to, but I'll show you guys that. And there's one more over here for the motor. And now the ECU is completely out of our way. We can now use the pliers to break this grommet free. Uh, this one has been removed before, but if it hasn't, you might need to work your way around this little boot or whatever you want to call this thing, a grommet, a boot, a seal, cover. Work your way around before pulling it out and then slide it down the wires. This one is sliding fairly easily. They don't all move that easily, so keep that in mind. Then you're going to take your special tool. Once you have this special tool, you slide it over the wires and engage it with the hex on the glow plug. So I'll show you on the new one, just so that it's a little bit more clear. So you slide it over the wires and engage it with the hex on the glow plug just like that. 
except you're doing it inside of the heater. So over the wires, onto the hex, and then you use your screwdriver to break it free. This one was already fairly loose because I've had it out before. And then you can use the wires to kind of spin it free. And from here, unless you need to remove the mesh, it is pretty much just reversing the process, putting the glow plug in and reconnecting everything. The glow plug mesh can be a bit stubborn. It is down in that little glow plug hole. And make sure not to try to take it out unless you have a new one. Most of the time, you're not gonna have to replace that uh, unless it's really carboned up. If you look in there and you see a whole lot of black gunk built up, then you can replace it, but don't try to take it out unless you need to take it out and unless you have a new one because it's probably gonna get wrecked in the process. I have removed them without destroying them in the past, but it is pretty tricky. The easiest way to go about doing it is use something like a pick. I have this screwdriver that's sharpened on the end and I also have a file that's sharpened on the end. And what you would do is jam it in between the mesh and the uh, burn chamber or glow plug hole itself and basically pry it up and then use your pliers to go in grab it and pull it out and that is pretty much going to destroy it so then you'll have to use your new glow plug mesh which you just push all the way into the hole some of them come with seating tools but that doesn't really matter just push it in all the way and uh, it will seat by itself then what you want to do is reinstall a glow plug i've got my brand new glow plug here and we are going to thread that in <clears throat> making sure not to cross thread it So we'll thread it in until it butts up against. Then we are gonna take our special tool, slide that over the wires, engage it with the hex. All right, this one was a little bit stubborn to engage with the hex, but I've got it. And now we're just going to snug it up. This doesn't have to be ridiculously tight. We're just gonna snug that up with a special tool. And then sliding the boot into place, we need to be careful. These, the ceramic on the end of the glow plug can be a little bit gentle as I found out when I broke my last one, which is right here. I accidentally snapped the end off it. So when you're sliding this boot back into place, you wanna be make you want to make sure that you're not rough with it. Take your time to work it in around and uh, yeah, just don't force things. I just got done filming a video where I tested this extra 4.8 meters of exhaust to see how it would affect the operation of my heater as well as checking to see how well it works as a heat exchanger. That video will be out soon. Okay, we have the boot fully seated in place. I did have to bend over the wire just a little bit on the end of the glow plug. And so now we are going to kind of pre-bend the wire back into this space so that the ECU doesn't have to force it back into place. Uh, we don't want any strain on the connector itself, so we're gonna take the wire and we are going to push it back in like this and kind of, like I say, pre-bend it. Just give it a little bend like that, push it back in there so that it kind of wants to stay like that. Now we are gonna reinstall the ECU. I always start with the glow plug connector because it is the stiffest wire. The other ones are quite flexible. So that just clicks back into place. We're gonna reconnect our motor. When you're taking this apart, you want to make sure to keep track of where these connectors go. But worst thing that is gonna happen is that the uh, ECU will just give you an error if you have them in the wrong place. It's not gonna catch fire or blow up or anything like that. So now what you do is line up the bottom hole approximately, and then push this back in over that little clasp and it will click into place. 
we reinstall our three millimeter Allen bolt or Allen screw. Again, when we tighten this up, we don't want to torque down on it real hard. I'm just using a finger and a thumb to snug that up. You don't want to get this end of the Allen key on there and start torquing on it or that will absolutely break. The next thing isn't terribly hard, but you might get confused when you start trying to put this cover back on. There is a groove that goes around the cover. So part of this goes underneath and part of it goes on top. And it's really easy to, yeah, it's really easy to get confused, but this one is made really well. It has a larger step on the bottom. So it goes together really nice. Not all of these are made this well. This Beaver one is, yeah, quite nice. So when you put it together, you want to make sure that you get part of this underneath, just like that. So like I say, this one slides in really easily, but yours, if these two pieces are even on the end, it might not go together as well. So you slide the cover into place just like that. Make sure that it's actually engaged. And then you simply close the cover up. And there's one thing I forgot is making sure you get your grommet back in place. So slide that grommet back in place before you try to put the cover on. Of course, when you're filming, you forget to do that. Okay, now that we have the grommet in place, we will put the cover on, close it, and once we have it closed, we thread the nut back on, and that is the job done. Give yourself a pat on the back, go reconnect your heater, and uh, enjoy the heat. If you guys are interested in one of these Viver 2 kilowatt heaters, or perhaps a 5 kilowatt, I will leave an affiliate link as well as a discount code in the description below. There you have it folks, that's just how easy it is. Once again, we used a kit from Amazon that was about $25, came with a glow plug, glow plug removal and installation tool, glow plug mesh, which we didn't have to use, and a couple of gaskets that we now have as spares because we didn't have to use them either. I will be getting back into my regularly scheduled videos. Those of you who watch my channel frequently will know that this isn't my typical video. I have been working on a burn chamber modification that I will be testing fairly soon. This is going to be dropped into here to allow me to hopefully burn waste motor oil. I'm also working on a design that is self-cleaning. Not sure when that's actually going to become a reality, but uh, I think it's gonna be interesting and we are going to do some other tests before we even get to the waste motor oil. I have some coconut oil as well as vegetable oil that I'm really excited about trying. That is gonna do it for this one. If you liked what you saw, please remember to leave a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more nonsense like this, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.